Welcome everybody to Our Green Acres. I'm so glad you came over to our channel today. And if you are new to my channel, I want to introduce myself. My name is Teresa. These decor projects are going to be some vintage style stacked books. You're never going to believe what we can do with some Dollar Tree books to make them vintage styled and make them lovely decor pieces in our home. I'm also going to give y'all a whole new outlook on a mailbox. I'm going to give you lots of ideas on how we can re repurpose a mailbox. And you will never check your mail again without thinking of this shabby sheet mailbox. And I'm also going to show y'all a very cute little vintage inspired ribbon and lace hanging garland. Hope y'all enjoy the video. If you haven't joined my Facebook Home Decor page, I'd love for you to go over and join it. And also, go over and follow me on Pinterest and Instagram. Okay, y'all. Y'all ready to get started? You're all excited? I know I am. I'm going to show y'all how I'm going to repurpose the mailbox. And stay tuned to the end because I'm going to stage it. I'm going to give you lots of ideas of how you can use it once we recreate it. And I've wanted to find a mailbox for the longest time. And I finally looked up on one at a church yard sale not too long ago. And I grabbed it up as soon as I saw it. I was like, yes. So hopefully after this video, when you go out to get the mail, you'll look at your mailbox in a whole different way. So the first thing I'm going to do is it's got these um, these numbers on it on the front and the both the sides. Some of them will come off and some of them not not so good. So the ones that would peel off, I just kind of went around and I kind of peeled off what I could. But I'm not really going to stress over it. If they don't come off, then I'm just going to leave them on there. And then I'll just paint over them with my chalk paint. Now, once I got all the stickers removed from both the sides, then I went over it with some goo gone. And I went over it just to get a lot of that sticky residue off of it. And then that way, when I go to apply my paint, you know, I don't have that sticky residue left and then once i i used it and i got all that rubbed off then i just went over it with a baby wipe and then i just kind of wiped off that that goo gone because that goo gone's kind of kind of got like a little oily feel to it so I always make sure to get some kind of cleaner or something and get that washed off now i'm going to go in with my favorite brush and my linen white and i'm going to go over this mailbox and i'm going to give it about three really good coats and um the thing with this mailbox is I wanted to stress it. So it's got a really good base already with that black up underneath it. So once I get all my paint applied, then I'm going to go around and I'm going to start out. I don't want to really put sandpaper on the metal. So I'm going to use my little plastic scraper and I'm going to scrape off as much of it as I can. Now the plastic scraper worked really well and I'm also going to get a baby wipe. I'm going to take the baby wipe and I'm going to go over the parts that I'm distressing because it will help moisten up your paint. And then that way it will help lift off with that little plastic scraper. And also you can use your fingernail a lot of times. You know, if you've got your paint kind of moistened with that little um, baby wipe, you can just take your fingernail and you can kind of just chip into the paint and get it to make it look like it's got a little bit of a worn chipped look. So I'm going to do that in, you know, in several spaces just in random of where I think, you know, a mailbox should have some wear and tear. And then I'm going to go over it very lightly with my sanding block and just kind of sand over it and kind of smooth out some of those little brush bristles. You know, if I would have spray painted it, I wouldn't have had the, the brush bristles, but I really wanted to chalk paint it. Now, the front of the mailbox has got that U.S. mail, that stand up. And wording on it so I want I want to bring that out so I'm really going to sand over it sand over that and kind of get that to to come back through the paint and there's also some embossed writing on the back of the mailbox so I went over my sand went over that with my sanding block and brought that out too so now you know we can't have a mailbox if we don't have an address on it so one of my French stencils that I've ordered off of Amazon I'm going to take that stencil and I'm going to go over it and I'm going to get that address, that number seven Rue Street. I'm just going to go up um, to, to that part right there and then to the bottom. And that's the part of the stencil that I'm going to put on the side of the mailbox. And I'm really loving stenciling with this Waverly ink. The color of it is ink and I'm really enjoying it and it stencils really well. So um, if, if you're looking for a good paint to stencil with and kind of a black color, I recommend it. So here it is. Y'all, I absolutely love this mailbox. 
Now I'm going to show y'all how we can turn some Dollar Tree books into vintage looking books. Now you can take any books that you have and I just went to Dollar Tree and got some but if you can you know find some at a thrift store or if you have some you're not reading anymore you know you can use any kind of books and the best way that I found to do the hardback books is just take some you know a sharp little um um, little exacto knife or your scissors and just cut down that spine on the inside and just kind of you know get it cut and then usually your hard um, cover will just peel right off and just just peel it off the best way you can it takes a little bit of muscle and just peel all that off with your hands now to me when you're looking for a hardback book at Dollar Tree some of them are made a little bit different, and I'll show you in just a minute some of the better books to look for so you'll have better looking spines. Now, if your spine, you know, is kind of plain and it may not, you know, look like it's very worn, you can take some coffee grounds like I did. And around the edges, I went around with those coffee grounds, and I just kind of rubbed them in just so I can give it more of that worn, vintage look. Now, y'all know I love me some Graphics Fairy. And y'all, they have um, worn book pages on the Graphics Fairy. They're free printables, and I will have this one linked down below. But I printed this one out, and it's going to look just like the page of a book that's been worn and, you know, it's aged. I loved it. So I just, I, I had to resize it. And when you go to resize it, you go into the, the print screen. But when, when you go to print, and it'll, you, in most computers, it'll have custom. And you'll click on custom. And that will allow you, um, when you get into that little custom setting, to resize um, your, your graphic. And then that way, you, it'll fit. You can, you'll have to kind of play with it and resize it to get it the shape um, and the size of the book that you're working on. But that's how I resize my graphic to fit my books. And then, you know, I kind of went around the front of that, um, the edges of that, that top book, just because my graphic doesn't fit exactly on top of it. And that way it just kind of blends in with my graphic. And just using just some plain old school glue I got at Dollar Tree, I just glued it on. And now I'm just going to tie it up with some really cute little vintage ribbons. And, um, and here is just a little close-up of what the binds look like. I mean, do you, could you tell that those books were ever bought at Dollar Tree? <laughs> they really don't look like it now. And see how worn and original that, you know, that graphic from Graphics Fairy looks. I was so impressed with that. Now, I don't know if y'all saw my video where I just redid a little shabby chic chair and I re-upholstered the seat. Well, this is a little bit of scrap fabric I had left over from that project, and I don't throw any of my scrap fabric away, but it wasn't long enough to fit around my book, so I'm just going to hot glue two pieces of it together. It'll be on the bottom. You won't ever see it. And then I'm just putting a little bit of some pearl lace that I got at a yard sale. I'm going to tie that with it, tie it in a knot. And you've got a great stack of vintage inspired books. And I really love the way these turned out. And if you want a really fun project to do, I love doing stack books. And you know I've got several videos on different kinds of stack books I've made. Now I'm going to show you, if you don't want to, you know, download a graphic, how you can just take the top page of your book, whatever book you've got on top, and just take that very first page, how you can just age it. Again, use your coffee grounds, just rub it on in the places that you want it, and go around the edges the most because you want the edges to be darker. And then that way you can just distress, you know, just that top part. And now I'm going to show you, like I told you just a minute ago, the best books to look for when you go to Dollar Tree or anywhere where you're shopping for books. You want to find a book that's mainly like the hardbacks. It's got like a, you know, the, the, um, the binder on it. You want it to more have more of that mesh look to it. So kind of look for books that may have that rather than more of a glued um, binder on it. And then that way, I think to me, it just, it looks better and it looks more tattered. And then this one was a really good book. Um, it did really well. And just leave as much of that paper on it too as you can, because that adds to it also. Okay, now I'm going to show y'all how we can make a shabby chic hanging garland out of some ribbon and some lace. Now, I'm going to show you some lace that I purchased in the clear section at Hobby Lobby. When I went to Hobby Lobby not too long ago, I breezed through the clearance section and they had this rolled 
uh, up piece of, you know, I guess this was just a remnant left off the bolt of fabric. So I picked up this pink lace and I think I only paid like $4 and some change for it. So I'm going to use it in my project today, but I'm just going to rip strips of random colors uh, and textures of, you know, fabrics and, you know, ribbons and lace that I have. Some of these ribbons and lace come from Dollar Tree. Some of it is stained flower sack cloth and some of it is the lace I got at Hobby Lobby. I just added random colors. You know, I really wanted it to be vintage and I wanted those neutrals and those pinks. So that's kind of what I went with. Now, I'm not sure how many strips I end up using to cover my dowel. But however long your dowel is, of course, you'll need enough strips of fabric and lace to cover the whole, you know, area of your dowel. I will leave probably about an inch on each end because I'm going to make like a little double knotted tie to go on it for a hanger. And now I'm just tying mine in knots because I want my strips to be long. I could double them and loop them over, but then you're going to get a shorter, you know, strip. And so I want mine to be long. And I, I you know, and I just varied the lengths of them. Not, they're not all straight across. They're just different lengths. So I'm just basically tying them in a knot. And then that little frazzled um, end, that little tail that you have at the top, to me, that just kind of adds to it. I don't trim them. I'm just going to leave all that just like it is. So I'm just going through here. And like I say, you just pretty much just tie them all across your dowel, you know, in a knot. And try to cover, not in a knot, I'm sorry. I'm just I'm just tying mine one time. You could tie them in a knot if you wanted to. And so you just keep on tying till you come to the end. And once you come to the end, then like I say, I'm going to show you how to make a little knotted hanger. It's really easy to make. And I just made it out of some stained flower sack cloth. But I'm just going to, you know, just kind of score a slit in it. And you see how easy it rips. And just rip you a strip. And then I'm going to double knot it and I'm going to leave a tail because I want a tail at each end of it. And that will also help cover up, you know, the rest of that dowel that's there at the end. Now you can hot glue this on or you can just run your dowel through those little knotted loops. And that's what I'm going to do. You know, just kind of go back through your knot, you know, and get your fingers through it. Then then where you've got the loop, just kind of run your dowel through it. And I did use a little bit of hot glue just to secure it on so it don't slide off. And then you just pull those little tails around and look how pretty this is. This, to me, just makes such a pretty little backdrop for things, you know. And I think this would be a really pretty addition to a nursery or maybe a wedding. Now I'm going to take three of my solo flowers. And don't forget, y'all, the promo code is Teresa, and they're offering $10 off your first purchase. So make sure to go to my description box for the details or over on my Instagram. But I'm just going to use a little piece of burlap just to make a little, you know, I guess a little backdrop for me to have something to glue my flowers to. And then I just attach those in the corner, and I think this turned out so cute. And like I say, I think style with our little vintage styled books... In our little mailbox today, I think that all these little pieces would be so pretty in your home. And they were such fun projects for me to work on. So I hope y'all get some inspiration and ideas from my video today. And I hope y'all try to make some of these projects. I'm going to let y'all sit back now and just watch how I style it and stage it for you. If you like this video so far, I hope you'll hit that like button. And also, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, I'd love for you to.
I hope y'all enjoy seeing all the ways that you can repurpose and use an, a mailbox. And I, like I told y'all, I've been wanting to find a mailbox for the longest time. And I also have another idea for it. You could use it as a bread box. Why not? You could even stencil or get your Cricut out and put bread on it. You could put pastries in it. You could store your snacks and chips in it. This little mailbox, once you repurpose it, you paint it, you put your own spin on it. You can use this for so many things. You can use it for a little appliance garage, like in your re your restroom. You could put your, you know, your colognes and your your curling iron, your flat iron. Just think outside the box with pieces like this that are unique for your home. When people come over, you know, they're, they're um, conversation pieces. Okay, y'all, we are getting towards the end of the video. I want to come back on and tell each and every one of y'all how much I appreciate you. And all of these items that you see in today's video will be available for sale. They will be at Stevens Antiques. And if you've watched my past couple of videos, you may already know that me and Steven have partnered up. He's going to start featuring my products and the things that I make in his store. So if you're interested in anything, you can contact him and his information will be below and also over on my Instagram. So, and I wanna appreciate the ones that have already reached out and purchased some of my things. Um, it's, it's crazy to me, just the support that I get from everybody. And you don't know how grateful and blessed that I am to each and every one of y'all and I took some things on Saturday we stocked the shelves and he called me a few days later and he's like I've sold it I need more stuff so y'all I am overwhelmed with gratitude and I feel so blessed to have each and every one of y'all thank you so much for all of your support so as always y'all I love y'all I hope y'all have a great rest of the week and I plan to see y'all again on Saturday in my next video love y'all bye